everybody, it's Matt. I wanted to do something a little bit different today. I hope you guys are all having a great day. Hope you had a good Memorial Day weekend that just passed by. And I know everybody's excited for Wave 3 spoilers uh, that are coming up and uh, all the cards that are getting revealed. But today, I wanted to talk about a game that is near and dear to my heart. DC deck building game. Uh, this is by Cryptozoic Games. It is a fantastic, very simple, very fun uh, cooperative and also competitive game. Now, there is a cooperative mode, which is called Crisis, which we'll talk about later. But this is a game where between two and five people play together and they try to uh, get the most points by uh, defeating super villains or superheroes if you have the villain version. And, you know, playing superpowers, collecting heroes, collecting villains, uh, different locations to increase your power and dominate and defeat the stack of villains. Now, uh, it is two to five players, but there is a solo variant you can kind of just uh, work with. But we're going to be focusing on the base game. So I have here uh, the entire deck that comes with this game. This deck right here consists of heroes, equipment, superpowers, and villains. I want to show you exactly what some of the cards look like. So this right here is a hero card. This is Robin, okay? Every card has a cost in which it is to buy. Every card has a victory point in the far left corner. It has a type by the color, heroes are blue. And it shows exactly what the card does when you play it. In this game, when you play a card on your turn, you resolve the card's entire effect. And then after resolving that effect, you can play an additional card. On your turn, you're going to begin the game with something called a starting deck. A starting deck is a set of seven punches. And you also get three vulnerabilities. Now, these vulnerabilities are kind of just the cards you don't want to keep in your deck anymore. As you play the game and as your deck gets better by cards you buy, you're going to want to phase out your starter cards and replace them by better cards. Now, what does that mean exactly? So, you begin the game with these cards I've just described. So let's go ahead and give a little shuffle up here and uh, take a look at what we have. So we got our 10 starter cards, so, so shuffle up. On our turn, at the start of our turn, I should say, we draw uh, five cards to begin the game. And then on your turn, you can play every card in your hand. Any card that you don't want to play, you just keep in your hand for the turn. So on my turn, I could go ahead and play these cards. Every card has a value in it. So if you look over here, this starter card right here, this punch, gives me plus one power. And if I play four of these punches, it's going to give me four buying power. Now, remember that Robin card? That had a three cost. If I wanted to, I could buy this card and then put it in my discard pile right away. After I've done finished purchasing all the cards that I wanted to this turn with all my power, I discard any cards I didn't play, and I draw like a hand of five new cards, and then I pass to the player uh, who's next. And they take their turn. And then when my turn comes up again, I play my, my, play my additional hand of cards. Now, once your hand runs out and once you have no more cards to draw, you're going to shuffle up and add all those new cards you've been adding to your discard ball into your brand new deck. And that's the basis of a deck building game. So, in DC deck building game, there are uh, a few different uh, types that we talked about before. So, let's go ahead and take a look at them. Uh, we've already talked about hero types, which we have right here. The second type is, is called uh, equipment. Equipments are basically things that you play down and uh, they usually have a, a special ability that can kind of just trigger just like heroes do. Equipment are gray, they have uh, the victory point cost and the cost like normal and a special ability that's lined right here. The next card type is called villain. Villains usually have a negative effect that hurts your opponents or gives you some type of uh, a benefit but, I'll, but also hurting you at the same time. Uh, they are very unique and certain characters actually um, depending on how you build your deck and how you play, you can uh, build a deck that's focused purely on villains, purely on heroes, equipment, or a mixture of all of them. The next two card types we're going to talk about is locations. Locations are cards that stay in play once you play them. They have something called ongoing. On your turn, when you play your hand of cards, every card that you played after your turn ends, you're going to take them and put them in your discard pile. That would be equivalent to a scrap pile like in Transformers. Locations in the other hand, anything that has the title that's called ongoing, stays in front of you for the game until someone makes you discard it. And they have a special ability. For example, if we had the back cave in play, when you play your first equipment on each turn, draw a card. It's pretty useful. And the last card type we're going to talk about that is in this first set 
are superpowers. Superpowers are very unique as they are orange and they are a lot less than the other cards that are in the game. This one right here, Heat Vision, says plus three power, you may destroy a card in your hand or discard pile. It's worth two victory points and cost six. Now, remember earlier when we were talking about how we want to get rid of cards in our hand that aren't really that beneficial? Punches are really only give you plus one power and vulnerabilities give you nothing. They're just, they're just blank cards. They say this has no effect, right? You want to make sure that you destroy these cards and get rid of them as fast as you can. So, those are the types of cards that are in the base of the game. When you buy the game, you're going to get everything here that you see, which is a starter deck. It's probably about a good 150, maybe 180 cards, I believe. And you're also going to get something else. So, aside from the stack of punches, which I showed you there, I have lots of punches from different versions of the game. So, they just, they just look different, that's all. You're also going to get a set of 16 kicks. They all have Batman on them. Okay. And depending on which version of the game that you get, you're going to get different versions of the characters on here. Different artwork, but they're all the same card. Kicks are superpowers that give you plus two power. Uh, remember how I said everything has a cost? When you total up your cost for the turn, you can spend them and buy cards as you go or play additional cards after you buy something. Uh, a kick uh, is something you can always purchase. It is placed right over here in the kick section. Uh, this is not considered the lineup. This lineup right here consists of five, uh, five sections in a row. On your turn, you can purchase any one of these cards right here, or you can purchase a card from, um, from over here in the kick section. Uh, the lineup is, is not the same as the weakness, supervillain, and the kick section. We'll discuss this more in a few moments. When a card says, gain a card from the lineup, like that, you would take it from this row up here. Anytime you gain a card, you would immediately put it in your discard pile. The next thing we have to talk about are weaknesses. Weaknesses are detriments or things that villains or supervillains will give to you to try to harm you. Uh, some cards in this game that you can buy let you um, play, play a card to give a weakness to opponent. A weakness does nothing when you play it. They hamper your deck and they're worth negative one victory points at the end of the game, which isn't very good. There are 20 you start the game with and they go in the stack over here. And if at any time the weakness stack runs out, you don't have to worry about refilling it or putting it back because once they're all gone, they're all gone. Next, we're going to talk about the supervillains. You're going to begin the game with the character Rachel Ghoul or Raza Ghoul, depending on how you want to pronounce it, uh, on top of the stack. Then you're going to shuffle up the remaining villains. If you're playing a new game that's one at a normal starting time, you're going to go ahead and choose seven. So six, seven. The remaining we're going to go ahead and put away in the box for later. So now that we've got our seven villains, we're going to go ahead and uh, shuffle them up right over here and put them face down so we don't know who, which, who we're fighting. We put Racial Ghoul on top and he stands over here. Now that we've set up the bases of the game, there's one more thing we have to do. Everyone has been given their, their stack of seven punches and three vulnerabilities. We all have to get a character. There are a total of the Justice League characters in this game and it comes with seven, but if you bought the very first version of the game, you also get a promo Martian Manhunter. So, if you can't find him, you may want to check the Board Game Geek store uh, online. Uh, I believe you can usually find these, or eBay for quite a pretty penny. Uh, he is quite good. Now, every character has a special ability. So, you get the starter box with Superman, Batman, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, Cyborg, Barry Allen Flash, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman. Martian Manhunter, as I said, is the promo. And you can either choose who your favorite superhero is, who, once you all agree, or you can shuffle them up and deal them out randomly. Each person gets one, or whichever your group wants to choose. We usually just kind of just put them face down and shuffle them, and everybody gets to pick one uh, once they, uh, you know, once we start up. So let's say if we start the game, and we go do a little shuffling here, and I'm playing against a friend. And let's say we want a little bit of a variety. Let's say each of us gets two cards. We can, pick our, we can pick our superhero. So I look at mine, I got Wonder Woman and Cyborg. Hey, Wonder Woman's pretty rad, let's get her. My friend on the other hand is looking over, Aquaman the Flash, pretty cool. Barry's ability is that you can go first. The first time a card tells you to draw one or more cards during your turns, draw an additional card. That's a pretty cool ability. Aquaman uh, is top tier, he's actually the best in the set, so um, we'll, 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 let him, we'll let him choose Aquaman because you may put any cards that you buy that cost five or less you, like that on top of your deck. So any card that you buy or gain, you can set up on your deck to either draw or play next turn when you get them. Uh, you have to remember, some of these villains here have high costs, so you wouldn't be able to put those 
on top of your deck. So let's say they choose Aquaman. Uh, Wonder Woman's ability is actually quite cool. Her ability is that for each villain you buy or gain during your turn, draw an extra card at the end of your turn. So you're going to be focused on buying lots of villains since that is uh, her special ability. Now that we each have had our starter deck here and get everything set up, we're going to go ahead and fill the lineup up. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's the starting lineup. So let's say on my turn, I'm going to be going first. Uh, or like that, because uh, we'll just say it goes that way. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, shuffle up and do our thing here. So, shuffle my starting deck. All right, and I draw my hand of five cards. I've got four punches. That means I have four power that I can play this turn. Now, before we get into buying things, let's talk about the villain stack. Remember how we went and put aside seven villains with racial goal on the top? Rachel Gould is going to sit here and do nothing because Rachel Gould kind of just likes to watch things and, you know, he's a schemer. In order to challenge Rachel Gould on her turn, we have to accumulate at least eight power to buy him. If we do, I can, if I get eight power by playing cards, by improving my deck, I can purchase him and then put him in my discard pile. And then once that I've done that, Rachel Gould has a special ability here that says put him on the bottom of your deck. But in general, uh, once you purchase a villain... Uh, you would go ahead and uh, finish your turn, draw your hand of five cards, and then a new villain would appear. And you'd flip it over, and that villain would say, first appearance attack, and then he would attack everybody at the table. Now what's cool about this, since you defeated the villain first, he attacks all your friends in order, clockwise, before it gets back to you. And everyone has to decide if they can defend from the attack. Defending from the attack, we're getting a little bit ahead of herself, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about what that means. So on my turn, as we go back to this, I've got four power. So I'm going to go ahead and play two punches and a vulnerability. I look on this little lineup here. Hmm. There's a villain I could buy over here, but there's lots of other good cards I can purchase. But because I'm playing Wonder Woman, I kind of want to focus on buying villains. So I'm going to purchase the Riddler. So I take the Riddler and I put him in my discard pile. This one's on the off the side, so I'll put it over here so you can see. All right, so I put it over here and I have exactly one power left. I can't purchase anything else left here because the Virler was three power and I used three of my power for my punches to buy it. So my turn is done. So all the cards that I played go in my scrap pile. Then I'm going to go ahead and draw my hand of five cards. But since I purchased a villain, Wonder Woman says I get to go ahead and draw an extra card. So let's go ahead and shuffle up and draw one more card. Now, any time that your deck runs empty, you're going to shuffle up your, your discard pile and create a new deck. That's what the whole, the whole basis of deck building is. You're going to be going ahead and adding and modifying your deck as you play. So let's look at my new hand. I've got three punches in the Riddler, so that's pretty good. So now that I've gone ahead and drawn my hand, I have to fill up the lineup because it was my turn. So I take a card from the top and I place it in the row, and then I pass to my fellow player. So if I'm playing with my, 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 my buddy... He is going to go ahead and uh, take his turn as Aquaman. So he goes ahead and draws his five cards, and he takes his turn. He's got five punches. That's pretty solid. So he looks over. He's got five punches. Why don't he buy? Why doesn't he buy King of Atlantis? That's a five cost card, and it says you may destroy a card in your discard pile. And if you do so, plus three power. Otherwise, he's only worth what, plus one power. So Aquaman, my opponent or my friend, buys him and puts him in his scrap pile. He takes all the cards that he played this turn, his five punches and puts them in his scrap pile, or discard pile. He draws a brand new hand of five cards. Since it was his turn and he bought a card from here, he fills up the lineup. Now, as we're gonna be playing this game, we're gonna be adding all these new cards to our decks to improve them. The reason why uh, this deck is all about kind of just doing better and playing aggressively or all playing cooperatively if you want to. This game is all about getting the most victory points. And every time you buy a card, it's going to have a victory point total on it. And all these supervillains over here have a victory point total that's going to add to your final score. So let's go ahead and advance the game a little bit just to show you how the game changes. All right, so we've advanced a few turns. And we've been buying cards specifically uh, to improve our decks. We've gone ahead and destroyed some cards in our deck. Most likely because of Aquaman's ability he's been destroying and some cards that I've purchased. So on my turn, I'm going to go ahead and try to attempt to fight this villain over here. So I look at my hand and I get to play some cards. So the first card I'm going to play is Green Arrow's Bow. It says, plus two power, supervillains you, you cost 
two less to defeat this turn. So Racial Ghoul or Raza Ghoul is only six power to defeat. I'm then going to go ahead and play a card called Cheetah. It says gain any card cost four or less from the lineup. So I look at the lineup over here. All the cards here are four or less except for this Heat Vision. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase this card over here that's called Bulletproof. This goes right into my discard pile because I gained it. The next card I'm going to go ahead and play is going to be Bane. Bane says plus two power, attack. Choose a foe and they discard a card. So I attack my friend who's playing Aquaman. He looks in his hand and he's like, you know what? I don't have a way to defend from this attack because I don't have any cards that say defense. So they, they have to go and discard a card. Knowing that their turn, that it, they, won't really, they won't really use the punch, they discard their punch. And then, on my turn, I'm going to go ahead and play Clayface, which says, choose a card I played this turn, I get to play it again. Do you know what? I kind of like the fact that he went and uh, discarded a card. I'm going to choose to copy Bane. Uh, so he's like, drat. So he goes and look over, and he's like, I'm just going to go ahead and discard this uh, Aquaman's Trident. My turn continues, then I play Lobo. Lobo says, plus three power, you may destroy two cards in your hand or the, discard, or the discard pile. I look into my discard pile. I don't want to destroy the real or the bulletproof because those are great cards. I want to destroy these starter cards that I'm not using anymore. So the ones that I've been you know, slowly discarding or getting rid of, I choose to destroy them. They get removed from the game in the destroyed pile. Now I calculate my, my, my total of my power. I've got two from the bow, two from Bane, which is four, five, six, seven. So I've got seven power in total. I look over here at Racial Ghoul. Racial Ghoul usually would cost eight, but because I used Green Arrow's bow, he's only going to cost six. So I decided to purchase Racial Ghoul, Raza Ghoul, and put him in my discard pile. Now, after all this has taken place here, I take all my cards and I put them in my, in my discard pile. And before I go ahead and do anything else, I fill up the lineup as usual. I draw my hand of five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Now, I did defeat a villain, even though that's a super villain that counts as a villain, so I get to draw one more card. Now, before I get to continue, Racial Ghoul had a special ability that we mentioned before, remember? At the end of your turn, put this card on the bottom of your owner's deck before drawing a new hand. So before I pass my turn, I take Racial Ghoul and put him on the bottom of my deck. My turn is now over, and I have to pass to the Aquaman player. But before I do that, we have to resolve a new villain that appears. So, this new villain appears right away and attacks us both. It is Black Manta. Black Manta says, First appearance attack. Each player discards the top card of his deck. If you discarded a card with a cost of one or more, choose one. Destroy it or discard your hand. So that's pretty nasty. And because I defeated the villain... It attacks my opponent first. So my opponent looks at their hand and they don't want to lose their hand like that, but they're they're gonna risk it. So they decide to go ahead and get attacked. So now that they're getting decided to get attacked, I decide if I want to defend. I look at my hand here, I don't want to lose any cards in my deck, but I have a defense card here. It's called Lasso of Truth. It says defense. I ignore the power part. You may discard this card to avoid an attack if I do draw a card. So I'm going to go ahead and defend against Black Manta's attack by discarding this card and drawing a card. It was a punch. Oh well. So they're going to get hit by this one. So they go ahead and discard the top card of the card. That sucks. If this card costs one or more, he has to choose one, destroy it, or discard his good hand. He has a pretty good hand here, so he's going to go ahead and destroy Robin. So this goes way over here to the destroyed pile. Aquaman's not too happy. Now that the villain has resolved the attack, Aquaman, the player, gets to take their turn. So they start their turn. They've already had their hand drawn. And they're like, well, that was a pretty bad turn. But we're going to go ahead and try to get ahead of it. So we're going to play the Flash, which says, the fastest man alive, draw two cards. So they draw two cards from their deck. And then they're going to play King of Atlantis. If you destroy a card in your discard pile, plus three power, otherwise plus one. So he looks at his discard pile... He's got some crappy punches in there. He doesn't need those. He's going to destroy this punch to make Aquaman, King of Atlantis, give him three power. Now that he has three power, he's going to play Supergirl. Supergirl's ability is you may put a kick from the stack into your hand. So he takes this kick and puts it into his hand and then plays it. Now he has five power. Three from King of Atlantis, two from the kick. And then he's going to play Super Speed, which says, draw a card. Oh, Kid Flash, draw another card. Do you see how I'm playing all my cards in order to show how they resolved? That's what you want to do when you're playing the game. Uh, only two punches left. So we've accumulated a total of three, four, five, 
six, seven power. Now, unfortunately, we don't have enough to challenge Black Manta, but we can go ahead and buy a card from the lineup here. So Aquaman's gonna be like, you know what? That Heat Vision card's pretty good. I'm gonna add it to my discard pile. So he buys it, puts it over there. His turn is done, and he goes and discards all of his hand and draws it in hand. Now, usually Aquaman can put most things on top of his deck, but because he bought a six cost card, it has to go into his discard pile. And then he draws a new hand. One, two, three. Unfortunately, his discard pile and draw pile here uh, is draws empty but discards full. He's going to shuffle up and draw two more cards. Refill the lineup and then pass the turn. Now that is the basics of how the game plays. When you're playing with multiple players between two to five, you're gonna have a lot to actually choose from when you're playing against in a competitive mode. And it's gonna be a lot of fun because this game is highly, highly addictive. There is a ton of sets out that has a lot of different variables. There's a Teen Titan set, a set called Heroes Unite, which uses the B superheroes. Uh, there's a set which is called Forever Evil, which bases the villains. There's small little expansions that change and modify the game that make it a lot more interesting and different. There's ones which you team up with each other called the, uh, I believe, I believe it's called the uh, Confrontation Set. And the there's other ones like the two-player Teen Titans. There is a ton of stuff in this game. And it's great. And I love it. It's one of my favorite card games. And it's highly, highly addictive. Now, um, that being said, when you buy this game, it's probably around 29 US, maybe 40 Canadian. And you get everything you want, everything that's here in the box. So you don't have to buy any more sets unless you just want to keep this base game, which is great. Now... With this game itself, there is another version called Crisis Mode. Crisis Mode is an expansion that you can buy which makes the game cooperative and it creates scenarios that you have to defeat and a villain and you have brand new versions of the heroes which they give to you that modifies the game and makes you work together. So if you have the first set of this game, the DC Deck Butter Crisis 1, you're going to want to buy the Crisis 1 uh, expansion. And in that expansion, you're going to be getting a set of heroes called the Crisis version. And all these characters here have art from the New 52 and a little bit of the, I think mostly the New 52. And uh, you're going to notice they have abilities that work together. And in that mode, you're going to be trying to defeat a scenario, a villain, before your deck runs out. If the whole starting deck runs out, the game's over. And you're going to be working together, as I said before. So, that is the basis of DC deck building by Cryptozoic. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. If you like Transformers, you may enjoy this game. Uh, it may not be for everyone, but if you think you might like it, maybe check it out. Uh, it's a, it's pretty good. Now, there are other deck building games you can check out uh, that I may want to suggest as well. There is some other ones that are, are a little bit similar, such as Marvel Legendary. There's also Star Realms, which is uh, very simple. Uh, you can also look into Mystic Veil, vale, which is a card crafting game. And Shards of Infinity slash Ascension, which are pretty much the same game, which is another game that's similar to uh, buy a card and make your, day, make your deck better. So, uh, anyways, that is uh, the game. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot more to it the more you play. And uh, if you want to see me do maybe a live play or even talk about different board games or card games that, you're, that you guys might seem interested in, just let me know down in the comments. I mean, uh, this is the first video that I did with this. I usually do a lot of Transformers content, but I want to kind of change it up and just to see what you guys think. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget, Wave 2 for Transformers releases in Canada. This Friday, we'll also be doing the giveaway uh, from the prior video if you took a look at it. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. And as always, play more games. Peace out, everybody.